I am basing some of my report on a paper by Yaroshevich et al. and Shea and Sisk, both of which use projectile and penetration relationships to help answer important questions in the archaeological debate. Both of these papers use experiments on projectile efficiency to better interpret the archaeological record. My aims, however, are less ambitious and will attempt to discover whether there are a number of valves which would decrease penetration depth enough to make the arrow non-lethal. To start with, I whittled 25 arrow tips, which was a simple matter of uh, a knife, 45 minutes, and the loss of feeling in both my thumbs. The reason I used wood tips as opposed to lithic, as most other experiments do, is I am solely testing the effects of the barbs on penetration, not points, and using wooden points gives me less variables. Creating the 48 barbs I needed was a significantly more time-consuming job. Thankfully, I was able to get some fully backed um, bladelets, some slightly retouched ones, and blanks from my lecturer Chris, which saved me many thousands of my very unskilled hours. I managed to get fairly reliable lengths and it ended up with four classes from my control group of zero barbs to two, four and six. So for example, to fully mount a two barb arrow, I would start with flakes and nap them to um, the arch backed bladelets and then cut notches into the pointed wood then using an epoxy putty you fasten the barbs to the notches that you've made. As buying a freshly killed full goat carcass was out of my budget range, I opted for making ballistics gel, with bone added to help replicate a realistic target at which to shoot. The bones used were a selection of sheep bones and were attempted to be placed straight across the gel but became a centrally located mass. Over the course of the testing, two bows were used, a compound bow calibrated to 40 pounds and a wooden sports bow. 
As the compound bow was proven to give consistent power output, I used it to shoot my arrows. Standing 5 metres from the target, I shot each of my arrows until lost, broken, or had lost more than one barb. This meant 1 to 5 shots per arrow with an average of 2 shots. Measurements gained were divided into two groups and analysed separately, as those arrows not hitting bone were passing through the gel and all reached very similar consistent depths of above 20 centimetres. This indicates there is no difference in penetration depths for my arrows when striking solely ballistics gel. The second set of measurements, those that hit bone, showed different results to the first. This graph shows the control of zero barbs averages the highest, then six, four and two barbs respectively. The footage also shows the considerable damage the arrow sustained from a variety of impacts on bone. These damages are much more similar to the results gathered by other experiments though exact diagnostic damage wear patterns will not be dealt with here. This is why the results were separated, so the first group of measurements doesn't skew the second. As seen by this graph, the measurements are quite different. This consideration means these results must be seen as preliminary and the experiment needs both replication and improvement to be interpretive. The experiment answered the hypothesis and showed preliminary results into the effects of barbs on penetration depths. To improve the experiment, a better ballistics target is needed, with a deeper mould, more bones placed several centimetres from the surface, and a more robust replica skin, perhaps thin leather. In addition, more arrows are required with more barbs for a more comprehensive report. The relevance of the results is, it helps to show the reason for not using microliths as barbs is not necessarily penetration effectiveness, but efficiency of construction and therefore helps to build a better picture of archaeological artefacts and their different uses through time.